This is the third video in the series for Word 2013. In the previous videos, we talked about entering, deleting, and in the second video, we talked about the home buttons. We talked about formats, and we just started with paragraphs. So the last thing I mentioned to you was about how you can highlight your stuff, and you can move to the center, to the right, and back to the left. And with paragraphs, what you can do is you can highlight your paragraphs and you can make it justify so that they are lined up nicely up here. So we'll move on and uh, do some more things and finish up the buttons in the paragraph section. Now next to justify there is this button here which is called line spacing. So I have these paragraphs highlighted so I'll just highlight this. And if I didn't want it to be like close to each other, I can click here and I can make it 2.0. That is double spacing. So you see the difference between the one on the bottom. So this is called double spacing. Or I can change it to 1.15. The 1.15 is a nice uh, spacing because it leaves enough more space and not like one. Let me show you one now. So one is too close to each other. So 1.15 is a nice way of choosing your paragraphs. And you can do it anywhere you highlight. 2.0. Make it 1.5 or make it 1.15. So it's up to you what it is that you prefer. Next to line spacing, there is an option to add color. Shading means, where you see a bucket, it just means like putting color. So if I click here, I can put like a color and it puts it all the way across. Okay. So wherever I highlight and I can choose to put like a shade on it. And when you change your mind, you highlight and then go back and make it no color. And please remember to pause the video if you want it to practice and you can always go back and rewind or forward the videos too. So that's called shading. The one next to it is called uh, option to two borders. So say I wanted to put a line after my telephone. I click next to it and I just choose this button. By default it says bottom borders or if you want you can just click on the drop down button and then choose bottom border. So see when I click it, it adds a bottom border there. And when I change my mind, I can click here and say no border. I can even highlight something. So say I highlight these lines. And I can choose to have outside border. So there it is. It puts the outside border. I can even highlight it. And I can say, you know what, don't put the left border and also don't put the right border. So I'm just clicking on it so it removes it because it's there and now it's not there. I can highlight it and I can make it no border. So make sure you understand the highlighting part because it's a very crucial element. Now if I wanted to put a line but I wanted a different style of a line, a different thickness, different color. So whenever you think of these options, realize that the button is there. We just need to find where the option is. So and usually it has to be around there. So if I click here in the drop down button and I go to borders and shading. And in here I can choose the different styles. So you see there are different lines. So I can choose this. And you see for some reason it's putting like a box. So I'll say, you know what, I don't want a box. So remove the box. If I only want it underlined. And I can even choose a color. And I can also choose a thickness. And I click OK. And you see there it is. Now I can choose no from here, no border. Or go back to borders and shading. And then choose none. And click OK. And the same thing with this. If I wanted to highlight it and I wanted to put a box, I can click in the drop down button. Go to borders and shading. Choose box because I want a box. And then I can choose the line I want, say this one. I can choose a color. And I can also choose a thickness. And it shows me there. And I click OK. And there it is. I can highlight and go back to borders and shading. And I can change the color to something else. Now sometimes you might find that the colors don't get updated. If that is the case, just make sure you click on the lines and they'll get updated. 
and click OK. And there it is. So that's borders. The next thing I want to talk to you about is called bullets and numbering. So I'm going to highlight this, for example, and I can add bullets. So, you know, in a resume, a lot of time you can add like bullets because it highlights certain things. And I can click on the drop down and I can choose different styles of bullets. And when I don't want it, while it is highlighted or highlighted again and choose none to remove it. You can also add numbering system like 1, 2, 3, 4 and you can also add make it ABC or new Romans and you can switch from bullets to numbering. It remembers the last one and you can change it back to none or press the same button to turn it off. Bullets, numbering. Next to it is an option to do multi-level list. What this for this to be activated, you have to have something indented. So what does that indent mean? So if I click here and I press the tab key on the keyboard, so now this is indented. This is like as if this is heading one and this is like a section one point A. And then if I want I can press indent two times. So that is pressing the tab key on the keyboard two times that will indent it. So this is section 1, this is section 1.a, this is section 1.a.1. And up here I'll just do it indent one time. So now if I highlight this and I can choose this multi-level list. So now you see I can choose this type of a section. So you see the way it puts it? Article, section and then the subsection. And I can change it to this style. So it says 1a and then within the a, i. This is point two because they are in same line. And then this is point A. So for this multi-level to work, you have to have something indented. I can hit the undo buttons if I want to go back. And if you didn't want to use the tab key on the keyboard to indent, you can use these buttons. So you see there is this button to increase indent. And I can use this button to decrease indent. which is the same as hitting the tab key. This button A to Z sorting is really useful when you have a table so that it will put things in alphabetical order or in numerical order. We don't have anything now. In the coming examples we'll do some tables so maybe at that time I'll talk about it. This button here is called show and hide. So when I press it it shows me symbols on the screen like this symbol. This symbol stands for that I hit the enter key wherever you see that symbol. And wherever I put a space you'll see there is a dot. You see there is a dot there. That dot symbolizes a period. So this is like a visual way of representing what's happening on your document. So all these things, they start to get shown up on your screen. And I can turn it off. And we'll talk more about that in the next videos. So the paragraph option is over. Now, even in the paragraph, there is this more button. And when I click on that, there's some options that show up. Uh, whether you want your line spacing, which I was able to use the button. Uh, which was this button here but you can change it from here and uh, I want to mention to you and show you how to use the tabs so so to do that I'll just put something here so say up here I'm just gonna put like 1999-2000 this is like say in your resume you know you you put a lot of your date of you work at this place from this year to that year and you want this section to be all the way on the right hand side. So usually what you'll do is you'll click in front of it and you start hitting the tab key and then you'll count and then you stop. So that's one way of doing it because then you'll have to remember how many times you hit it and then you'll try to put it in line for this guy. Okay. But there is a way by which you can set it through what's known as tab stop. So I'm just gonna show it to you. So what I'll do is I highlight this line 
and I'll hold the control button down on the keyboard so I can also highlight this one because I don't want to highlight anything in the middle. So this is a really good way to highlight lines and change things together. So again I'll talk about it. Highlight it. Leave your mouse and everything. Hold the control button down and now start highlighting the second line. Now I'm going to go to this paragraph more and I'll click on the tabs option and it is asking me what is the position you want it to stop. So I'll say I want it to stop at 6 inches. So I'll type 6 and it's asking me how do you want to align it. I'll say align it to right. That means start from wherever you want to start but don't go beyond 6. If I leave it as left, what will happen is the numbers, when I hit tab, it will start from 6 going forward. So it will go in the margins, which I don't want. But I don't want them to go beyond 6, so I choose right. I hit set and I click OK. Nothing changed because I need to click into the number front of number 1. And if I hit the tab key, it should jump. You see, it jumped and it stopped in line with 6 inches. And if I click here, I hit tab. So it jumps. So this is known as tab stop. So this way I don't have to memorize how many tabs I've hit to do that. Because if I here, if I type some years, then if I click here, I'll have to hit tab, 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 which is a pain. So what I'll do now, just to show you, I'll highlight this line. And remember in the previous video I talked about Format Painter, so I'll just click it one time because I want to use it one time. I'll click it and I'll highlight this line. I'll click in front of 2 because I've applied the format to this. If I hit the Tab key, it jumps. So once you've set it up, you can use the Format Painter to keep on adding it to the lines you want it. So this is known as Tab Stop. So I'll stop here at this uh, point and then in the next videos we'll talk about styles, how to use it, creating your own styles and most probably some other things. Thank you for watching.